Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Duane Robbins. I'm a Principal Program Manager at Microsoft. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with you to show you how to create a custom connector for Power Automate. So the first thing that we need to explore is what is a custom connector? And a custom connector is the ability for you to be able to build a call from Power Automate to a backend API. Currently, there's over 750 connectors that are available to you today that are out of the box. And some of those are standard, which come free, and others that are premium connectors. And those premium connectors come with a license to PVA or with premium uh, SKUs for Power Automate. Now, let's assume though that you have uh, looked at all of those connectors and those connectors aren't exactly what you're looking for and you need to be able to make an API call. This is where it's important for you to know that you can create your own custom connector and you can see that there's instructions on how to do this inside of the learn.microsoft website. So with that, we're going to go and look at this and be aware that you can come here and you can create and use custom APIs and learn all about how to be able to do this. The first thing though, is we need to figure out, well, what type of API do we want to call? And in this case, for this demo video, what we're going to do is we're going to leverage the Arrow API um, Connect, API that allows you to be able to create a uh, an application or it's an API that allows you to be able to get information about flights. And this will go into a series that I will be producing that will show you how to create a flight, a flight uh, booking or a flight schedule information bot that will be built on top of PVA with our new unified authoring canvas. So First, let's look at the API across the board, and there's a few things that you're looking for here. So if you want to use FlightAware specifically, you can sign up for your own custom uh, API endpoint. The idea here is that you want to get the Arrow API uh, offering from them, and you'll register for an account. They give you like a free level of access, and a lot of different APIs that um, are available will give you this ability. So what you will want to do is the first thing you'll want to look for is to make sure that the documentation on this API is pretty helpful and extensive. And the things that you're going to be looking for specifically is going to be the API server endpoints, making sure that you see that there's that this is documented well, as well as the way that authentication is handled for this. And you'll see here that this particular API has a endpoint here uh, that you'll need to use. And then you'll also see that this is how you're going to pass the authentication. And so as long as you can see that these are either by header or through a query and that they actually have an API endpoint that's useful, this is a thing that you'll look at. It's also good that if you want to build a specific application that you peruse the actual API. In the case for me, I'm looking to be able to build like a flat flight status bot. So I need to take a look at the API itself and see, is it documented well and what kind of information will it return? And so here you'll find that you can get tons of information about flight schedules and such by going in and using the get flights component um, of this. And not to mention another good thing about this particular API, uh, this provider is that they have the ability for you to come in very easily and say, this is how I want to pass the information. You can hit try. And then what you'll find is that this curl response right here will give me the information that I need to formulate my connector. Now, most APIs will have some mechanism that will allow you to be able to find out how to pass things. And in this one, you can even change what you're wanting to pass and put different things in. So like I, if I wanted to um, do like uh, DL997, which is a different flight, and I come in and I come into their controls, a little weird on their scroll bars here, but um, to give you perspective, you can pass this information in and then you can hit try and you'll notice that inside of this, it'll actually have 
the in the URL, it will give you the example of the API query. Now, these are what we call RESTful APIs, and they're web-based. Um, so that way you can easily get what you need and build the connector that you're looking for. So this is a key concept that you want to be looking after when you decide you're going to build an API or build, I'm sorry, a custom connector. So now where do I actually go to do this? Well, inside of Power Automate, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, number one is going to be that you can come in underneath data and you'll see custom connectors. And in this, you can just come in and you can say new custom connector. And you can pull it in through an open API file where you can do it through all these different mechanisms. But for most people, you may not want the entire definition of the API. You may just want to create it from a blank. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at some at the FlightAware one that I've actually built so that you can see how did we, how did we go about doing this. So as you go in and you say create from blank, well, the first thing you're going to see is it's going to ask you a question. It's going to say, do you want a logo or things of this nature? And this goes back to what the documentation that we saw on the API before. So what you're going to want to be able to do is be able to easily bounce back and forth between the different um, browsers to be able to have your API documentation open while you're actually building the custom connector. Now, once you go in and you start doing this, your first thing you'll do is you'll say that most APIs are going to go over HTTPS. So that'll be your default. And you'll notice here that you're looking for the host. Now, where did I get the host? I got the host. If we remember, we went back to API servers here. And you'll see that this is the host name right here that we're looking for. Now, if you're trying to figure out, well, how do I know what what is that host? It's going to be the thing minus the HTTPS, and it's just the .com. And when you take that, you apply that in here. Now you'll see that it says base URL. Now what does that mean? That means what am I going to append to the end to be able to make sure that I can bring in the additional parts of the URL? And in this case, you'll notice that the actual environment that we're wanting to go to is the slash arrow API. Now, by doing this, I've been able to come in and I've able to put this in and be able to bring it in and it will construct the URL. Now, the next thing that you'll do is you'll move to security. Now, in the case of security, you're going to have some options. You have these different options here. For most cases, you're going to see an API key. Now, if you don't have authentication, you can do no authentication and there might be basic and things of that nature. But for most APIs that we're going to be dealing with, an API key is sufficient. So this here in the parameter label, this is what you want to call it. You don't have to call it API key. I just use API uh, space key here. And then you've got a parameter name. Well, what is the parameter name? Well, that is what the API is passing the key as. And as you can see here in authentication, it says right here that it's going to pass it this way. But it also says here that it's in the header, right? So you need to send X dash API key in the header. So now how do we do that in the connector? Well, it's right here. We pass the parameter that is going to be how we're going to send it. And then we're going to pass it in the header. So after you've done this and you've got that down, you get into the definition. And what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to show you that you have flights and schedule. And the reason you have flights and schedule is because when I was building this custom connector, I came in and I said, I want to do the flights. And you can see here, flights. And then I also will, where did schedules come from? And if I scroll all the way down in this API, you'll see schedules, right? So we're going to focus on the flights one for this particular demonstration. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to construct this. Now, in the case that I already got this one, we'll take a look at this and we'll see well, what is in here. Well, the, you'll see that I had flights. This is my name of it. You get a description. One common way to be able to get the 
description is you can just pull it. You can just copy and paste it directly from the uh, the place where you're getting this. Now, if this is your own private API, you need to take care of that, right? So in this case, what I'll do is I'll call it flights and then the operation ID. Well, what is the operation ID? The operation ID is the thing past this. So if you'll notice that the URL as it gets constructed, and we'll look at this in just a second, is this is what's appended to the actual uh, HTTPS URL that we were building. So in the case of this, that's why we're calling it from there. That's where the flights comes from. Now, you'll notice here that I have already created a get, which comes in and it fills out all this information. But let's just do a new one so that you can see how I would have formed this. So in the case of this, I would have said flights, and then I'd give it description. And then here we would do flights again. And then now you would have this where it's blank, right? And you would say import from sample. Now, this is where having a good API uh, on the back end. So if you're choosing between different providers of APIs, this is where documentation is king for you. So you go over and we look at this and we say, okay, we want to do this get flights and we want to be able to get this information. I'm going to need to pass the, um, the basically the flight ID in this. And they give you an example of how this is going to be passed. So make sure you pay attention to how this can be passed. The other thing is there are additional pieces of information like what's the start time, what is the end time um, for the query around this because that flight, flight numbers are the same uh, each day, but they change. Uh, of course, you have a different flight every day. So the flight number is the same, but you need to give it the date when you're wanting this. In the case of what I'm doing uh, long term is I'm going to give it today's date and tomorrow's date. So that way I can find out what's the most recent flight um, information. So, so with this, we hit the try button here and you'll see that this is gonna give us this big long URL. So we're just gonna copy all of that text. We're gonna come back and we're gonna be doing a get. So if you're not familiar with this, get is the most common way to be able to query, to get information. If you're wanting to do a delete action, a post is uh, the ability to write. Um, and things of that nature. And you will see these different options, but primarily in most cases, you're gonna be doing a get action unless you're writing back to it. In this case, what I do is I just paste in the entirety of that particular uh, curl command. And what you'll notice is that there's a whole bunch of extra stuff here because it's a curl command. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete all of that off because at this point, this piece of information here is the actual end date, right? And notice that it's in a, a format. Don't worry about the format. All you have to do with this is you do an open curly brace of that, and you can just say end date, and then close your curly bracket. Then go back and you get the other time, and you'll see this is what's ahead of the start. So we'll take it. We'll open a curly bracket and we'll put start date. And then we'll close our curly bracket. And then notice that in the URL here is the sample that we put in of our flight. So in that case, we want to replace that and we're going to put in flight number. So once we do that, you can hit import and it will automatically generate everything you need to be able to build this. So you can see here, we're gonna be having flight number, start times and end times and everything. And once you do this and you have this here, you'll see that I get this because of the fact that I don't have a unique identifier, but you'll want to hit save connector and then you'll, or update connector as you go through and creating different actions. Now, once you've done this, you are actually done. You've created your connector. And in the case of doing this, what will happen is it will show up. I'm not going to save this now. It'll show up in here as a connector. If you want to download it, you can download it. So there's one last piece that I want to add, and that is if you are using PVA or Power Virtual Agents and you want to use this connector in conjunction with the solution, 
you do actually have to build the connector in a solution aware context. So in the case of this, in your, let's say that you're using PVA, you can come into the settings and you can go into um, your bot details. And one of the things you can do is you can say export and go to Power Apps uh, Solutions. Now, this is where you can see solutions. And in the case that you want to create a solution, in this case, I already have created a solution. But if I wanted to create another one, you would just say new. You would select your publisher and you'd create a solution. But once you create a solution, such as this one, you can say add existing. And when you do that, you would add a chatbot to the solution. So that would put create a solution, put your chatbot in it. But now you need a custom connector. Well, you do new and under automation, custom connector. And by doing it this way and creating it, and you'll see what it'll do. It'll take us right back to where we were. Now this is creating it as an actual solution aware custom connector so that I can export it and import it up and down the chain. So I hope this was helpful. I'll show you how to actually consume this connector as we go into future videos. But thank you very much for your time today, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you.